Oh, sorry. I was just eating a processor. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another... I swear I'm okay. I'm good. So, channel comments number three? Is this the third one? Have I done three of these already? Let me look. I mean, this is redundant. It's the fourth one. Wow. I didn't realize. Today we are covering six of the reactions that I've done. Um, various amounts of comments from each one. Uh, we'll be talking about, I'm sure you can see from the thumbnail, um, the Sunday's album. We got VDC, uh, both of the Substance albums from New Order, uh, as well as a couple from Roller Coaster by Red House Painters. So without further ado, let's just jump right into what you guys have to say, because I'm sure it's great. Here we go. So we have the Sundays. Reading, writing, arithmetic, is that what it's called? I can't even remember. Um, which I will say, album has grown on me a little bit since I've listened to it. I still don't love it, um, but it's more enjoyable for me to listen to now than it was when I first heard it. It just felt like this, of course, someone's flushing every single time. Um, bathroom's right next door. Um, it felt just like a Smith's derivative, like a Jangle Pop derivative uh, from England. Um, but since I've listened to the, some of those songs a little bit more uh, since hearing that album, I, I like it a little bit more. It's it's very kind of like the reason I like Coldplay. It's derivative, but it's very unoffensive. Um, and so it's just like it's pleasant to listen to. And I'm like, OK, I, I get the Sundays a little bit more now, especially that album. So here's a comment here. This is an underwhelming commentary of a extremely skilled and unique band. I love to hear this guy's melodies, as he said he's a songwriter. Good luck trying to match David Govren's guitar hooks. You can hear my melodies, they're all over my channel if you so desire. And I think that some of the tracks on uh, reading, writing, arithmetic, the melodies aren't as good as some of the tracks that I've written. I'll be honest, I'll say that, my, that much. Um, but there's some really solid tracks on this album. I won't, I won't put that past anybody. Um, I mean, underwhelming commentary, sure, but it's like, it's the first reaction, dude. Um, and that's why I started doing my follow-up series. Um, I think during Morrissey's when I started doing that at the tail end of Morrissey, um, I haven't done it for every single reaction I've done. Maybe it might be wise to go back and do a retroactive follow-up for every single album, that I haven't done a follow-up for, let me know if you guys want that. Uh, but even then, like follow-ups are prone to change. Like I do a follow-up one to two weeks after I listen to an album for the first time. And even then that's not long enough of a time for me to digest the album. So who knows? And then of course, comments like this that say, I really like how honest you are. And it's like, comments like that just make my day. You know, the people who come, like even if they don't love or even if they don't completely agree with the opinion I have and they love the album, I like that they're just like, you know, I, I admire that you're taking this album that's well loved and regarded by a lot of people and you just are saying that you don't enjoy it. And there are people who really respect that. And I really respect that they respect that. I just, I like that, that, you know, um, symmetry. No, Sym symbiosis. There you go. There's a word. Matthew says, what is your talent, little man? Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm okay at chess. I can, I can play some music. Uh, I know how to keep cigars in my humidor. Um, I have a, a new, uh, screen for my parents' iPhone that I'm going to replace tonight. Um, I can eat processors. Yeah, and what good is an education from Juilliard? Never mind. What does this mean? Yeah, and what good is an education from Juilliard? Never mind. That's so cryptic. What is he talking about? Kenny, please tell me. And then last one from the Sundays. Emma Wheeler is an infinitely more interesting person than Morrissey. Um, I, it's coming from someone called Reclusive Poet. So take that as you will, which Morrissey was a reclusive and is a reclusive poet. But it's like 
Emma Wheeler is such a smaller personality than than Morrissey. Uh, interesting, maybe I don't know, but Morrissey is like an endless enigma. So I just don't know if I agree with that, but as you will. So we're going into VDC here, um, the Sweet Trip album, Velocity Design Comfort, uh, which I recently reacted to, what, how do you say it, Halika, Halisa, um, their debut album. I did a live reaction to that. You can find that on my channel. It's probably the video right before this one. Um, so I, I, I dig Sweet Trip. I like both of the albums. Uh, this comment says, the only reaction on YouTube for this album, and it's a nice analytical chill one at that. Nice. Thank you, dude. I appreciate it. Um, I like how the, the yoo that I drink in that video has become like a meme, or a very small meme regarding uh, or related to a Velocity Design Comfort. It's like, you know, never in a million years would you think that uh, like just something that you're doing off the cuff where it's like, you know, I feel like drinking a yoo today. Oh, I got to react to an album. We're doing uh, the whatever was voted for on my Patreon. And it just becomes a thing, you know? So... Not that it's a big meme, but it, it, it is one at that. So anyway. Okay, you are perfect. Thank you, uh, Kaik? Ka? Ka? Fark me. You've got no idea on how to accurately describe music. Really? I mean, I could probably talk about like the music theory of the stuff, but I don't want to bore you guys. I, I don't know. I mean, like, the, I like how the first comment was like, you were analytical and I like that. And this guy's like, you have no idea how to accurately describe music, how to accurately describe music. So I don't know. Maybe one of you guys is wrong. One of you guys has to be wrong or you're both right and I'm wrong. I don't know. And then meanwhile, you have a comment like this in relation to that last one. It's 10 a.m. I have the house to myself. I'm doing stuff around the house and I'm playing this album. Very fitting description. So I like how the guy before said, I cannot describe this music at all. And yet this person said like, that's a great description for the album. It's like, I don't know. First video I've ever seen of someone with the same cans as me. 240s are criminally underrated. And so is this album, great video. Yes, I've had these for, I think five years almost. Um, and they still sound great. If you guys haven't gotten them, they are, um, AKG K40 Studio. Here we go. K40 Studios. They uh, they cost a little bit, but I mean, they've lasted five years. They still sound great. Um, I use them all the time. So highly recommended. I think they're the same ones that Fantano uses and that's how I learned about them. Okay, so now we're into Substance Part 1. Um, I did both Substance, Joy Division, and New Order albums in two different parts. So this is Substance for New Order. Part one, Troy Talbot says, lol, I just can't take you seriously if you're downing candy bars and drinking Coke. Thanks for reviewing Joy Division. <laughs> That's good. Uh, yeah, I mean, every time that I like I'm drinking or eating something on, on a reaction, it's completely like a joke or just me being silly and not actually like putting it into the like, okay, we're going to react to this thing. I'm going to drink some of this because it will get me in the mood. And not, I'm not, I'm like, not being serious about that. Um, like I drank like a Mountain Dew Black Label while listening to Disintegration because I thought it would be funny. And some people were upset about that. Um, so I, I, I did that kind of ironically, but at least you thanked me for reviewing it. So uh, thank you. Also, I just realized I said it was the New Order um, videos. It was apparently the Joy, Joy Division videos. I took these screenshots um, a little while back, and today is the 12th of February. I took these the 1st of February, so it's been like about two weeks since I took these, and I thought they were for New Order, but apparently I was wrong, so I apologize. Anyway, next comment from Substance Part 1 of Joy Division. Have you listened to any Blonde Redhead? 23 would be a great song slash album reaction. Love your content. I have heard that album since then. Um, I'm noticing this is a recurring thing where people suggest albums and I've actually listened to them in the interim even though I haven't done reactions to them. But 23 by Blonde Redhead. Great kind of indie, art rock, shoegaze, uh, sometimes experimental kind of rock album. Um, it's really nice. If you enjoy Radiohead, 
or any other kind of like indie or even somewhat shoegaze kind of sound uh, band, um, 23 is a great place to begin. And I've heard other Blonde Redhead albums are good as well. So definitely check that out. You can't empathize with a dead person that died by suicide. Boy, you are cold. Well, Calvin, I hate to break it to you, but empathize versus the word sympathize. Empathize indicates that you have felt the same pain that the person you are trying to connect with has felt. Sympathize just means that you are, you know, um, sharing in their hurt or just, you know, trying to have some compassion or put yourself in their in their shoes. You cannot empathize with a person that is dead, that has killed themselves by suicide, unless you yourself have commit su committed suicide. It's just impossible. I can sympathize with him, but I can't empathize with him because if I did, I wouldn't be making this comments video right now. And I mean, I basically say as much in, in my reply right here. Um, it's just people sometimes don't realize the difference between sympathize and empathize. And if you don't know the difference between them, just go check it out. So this next one needs a little bit of like, uh, not foreshadowing, but like clarification preamble before we begin. So I did some individual song reactions with my nephew. Um, he has been very busy since then. He has gotten uh, a solid job. He's gotten married. He's moved out. So he's he's been really busy since we started doing song reactions. And he just hasn't been around to do any more since. But um, we did some song reactions for Siamese Dream, uh, Smashing Pumpkins. I think we did four tracks. Um, we didn't love them. They were solid. Um, but we were just like, we're not super into this kind of grunge sound and people flipped out. Um, they were talking about how like they weren't from Seattle, they weren't grunge. And I was like, uh, grunge is a music genre. It's also a style, but it's also a music genre. And some of, uh, Siamese dream falls into the grunge music theory genre. It's, it's unavoidable. It's definitely there. Um, even if like they don't fall into that Nirvana style, right? Which I'm not saying they do. I'm just saying that the music sounds somewhat grungy in its genre of music and people lost their minds. So we made a joke video where we listened to all of Siamese Dream, but we didn't actually listen to it. Like as soon as the, the album started playing, I put down my headphones, uh, Ethan, my nephew, he was right here in the room with me. I put down my headphones and left, I had to go to the bathroom. And then came back, I didn't put my headphones on, and we just like said random stuff and said stupid jokes and just did like cringy stuff for the, like the rest of the album. And then put our, the headphones back on and we were like, I don't know if I liked it that much. Um, it was just a joke. Uh, you can probably, I'm sure, still find that on my YouTube if you look up Siamese Dream. Um, but there were some people who just did not get the joke or didn't understand what was going on. Um, and, uh, or they did, and, uh, they appreciated it. So here's some of those comments from that video. Wasn't expecting much, got a lot. And I said, we aim low, but shoot high. And then we also had, uh, this guy say, what is the point of this video? I have no clue how you have 7,000 subscribers, which I find really funny because sometimes people have subscribers for weird reasons. Um, for those of you who don't know, I did piano tutorials back in like 2008 through 2010. Um, I was in high school at the time and I thought that learning some of the Twilight music on piano would uh, make the girls like me a lot, uh, which it did to a degree. But I learned Bella's Lullaby from the first Twilight movie on piano and I made a video tutorial for it because I didn't see anyone else doing anything that was as good at the time. Since then, there's been better material and my stuff is definitely inferior, but my most popular video on my channel is part one of my Bella's Lullaby Piano uh, video tutorial, which has over a million views. Um, and so most of my subscribers, probably at least 5,000 of my subscribers, are dead accounts from people who have either followed me from my random variety stuff I was making in 2007 um, or 
high school girls at the time who followed me for my piano videos. And I did like piano to some piano tutorials, but a lot of piano covers, things like The Fray, The Killers, um, co- a lot of Coldplay at the time, uh, some Radiohead. And I've done Radiohead tutorials too that are still quite popular, um, but nowhere near as much as that Bella's Lullaby video. And just the, a lot of those accounts are dead or they just don't care about me anymore or they don't check their subscriptions. Um, so I would say I probably have 2,000 at most active subscribers right now. Um, I think five to 6,000 of them are just dead accounts that just basically don't do anything anymore. Because if you look at how many subscribers I have versus how many views I get on every video I make, it is low. It, the ratio is really low. So that is my clarification for why I don't have... If just seeing that my account has 8,000 subscribers says nothing about the quality of my videos. Damn, somebody's self-important. Not really. We were just wanting to have fun. Sorry you didn't enjoy it. Cringe, sad face. I'm not denying that. The dislikes are growing. More, more. And then someone responds, cringe. I'm not denying that. Okay, so now we're getting into Roller Coaster. Last two albums here. Uh, roller coaster red house painters. I get this one fairly regularly, and I, you just saw it a little while ago, I think. Um, damn, you're good looking. This guy has responded. I assume it's a guy. Um, I think I've clicked on this person's account and like kind of looked, and I think I figured out it was a guy. I don't remember, but I do get a lot of guys who hit on me or say I'm good looking. Um, very rarely do I get like a female who does so. I think I got one recently from a girl or a woman who said I was good looking. It was like some random video that I uploaded in the last like three years. Um, but mostly it's guys. I don't know why that is, but it's just an odd statistic that uh, apparently guys think I'm more attractive than women, which is fine. I don't care. I'm married to a woman, so I'm off the market for any kind of uh, person who's out there. But you know what? I'll take the compliment. Thank you. 2020, here we are. If you only knew what was in store. Yeah, I think this was one of my first, uh, last uh, reactions of 2019 or one of my first in 2020. And uh, I just commented on the new year and man, I didn't know what was in store. A, a pandemic happened and B, I lost my job. Um, and C, we have a third kid on the way. So it definitely, I did not know what was in store at all. And then finally, to end this video, once and for all, um, we have uh, Substance 2. I assume this is Joy Division again. I don't know. Um, but we have just one comment from this. It's one of my trolls who always likes to comment on my videos and give me a hard time. Peter Hook literally said, they don't want right-wingers listening to their music. Stick to listening to Tej Nugent, please. I just find this like astounding. Like if that's true, whatever, but like an artist being like a gatekeeper, being like these type of people don't listen to me. Um, because it's like me as an artist, I try to tell the truth. I try to, you know, express beauty and hardship and just, you know, the the human condition in real life as it is, you know, through through my own lens, of course. But I would never be like, hey, this particular political party or this gender or this race or whatever, don't listen to my music. I don't want you listening to it. That seems really odd really odd to me because it's like, if you think you're someone making quality art, I would assume you would want anyone and everyone to listen to it. Um, like, let's just say, for example, I am someone who thinks murdering is bad and I make art about how bad murdering is. I would want every murderer to listen to my music because I, hopefully I could change their mind and get through to them emotionally and possibly, you know, philosophically through the lyrics or something. I would never say, don't ever listen to my music if you're in this category. I want everyone to listen to my music. I want everyone to watch my videos. 
If you disagree with me, fine. You can stop watching. You don't have to support me on Patreon if you don't want to. It is a free world out there, unless there's some country that's forcing you at gunpoint to you know, support me on Patreon, which if that's the case, let me know. I'll try to make that stop. But um, this is just such a weird way of thinking. And it's so gatekeeping and divisive. And I don't like that. Um, I think that art is one of the more free expressions of people. And it's such a beautiful thing. And dividing it like this is just so counterproductive and doesn't do the world any good. Because by saying something like this, you're not making me think, oh, I should be left wing so I can enjoy this music. You're just making me think like, oh no, you're wrong. I can listen to it if I want to. You, can, it's, it's a public product. You can't, and even if Peter Hook said that, he can't enforce who does and who doesn't listen to this music. I'm sorry. It's just, it's the way it is. And you know, he's probably gotten like five cents from me on Spotify. So <laughs> who's he to complain? Anyway, that is channel comments number four. Um, if I'm not mistaken, um, I think we're stopping right before uh, David Bowie. Um, so we have plenty of good material ahead of us. Uh, let me just double check here real quick. Yeah, Siamese Dream, Red House Painters. Oh, Substance Part Part two, I guess it was New Order. Oh yeah, Com comments too, okay. Yeah, totally. Um, I think it definitely was the New Order videos. I don't know why the guy said Joy Division in the comments, but I guess it was New Order. So next uh, comments video, we'll probably have a bevy of David Bowie comments and then a bevy of Morrissey comments. And then right after that, of course, Cocteau Twins, Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin come up. So it should be fun, should be fun. So again, if you guys want me to do more of these, let me know. Um, I know some of you guys like them. They tend to do well. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, put a crack in that Liberty Bell, all of that stuff that they tell you to say to have a successful YouTube channel, which is what I want. Thank you, Godspeed.